If you'd like to speak with me, please turn on your microphone. Good morning. Yes, good morning. I wonder if you could talk about a word I just learned yesterday, and it's anicca, impermanence. Hmm. So what was the context that you uh, came across this word? I spent a day with uh, Vipassana meditation. They had a full day. And I had never heard the word before, so he. Ah, it was yeah. in, it was in the meditation, Anicca. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, this is related to what I was saying earlier. That's why. I, yeah. So there's a couple of levels of meaning of impermanence or Anicca. There's a couple of levels of meaning there. Um, one is just simply the acknowledgement of what is. All of our experience in the st states of waking, dreaming, and sleeping, all of our thoughts, all of our emotions, and so on, can be seen through, well, in this case, since you were dealing with mindfulness practice, hmm through mindfulness of breathing, through returning over and over to that, we are able to see that everything which rises when it's not grasped at or clung to or pushed away, has there's a, there's a natural life to the phenomenon or the objects in mind. They rise interdependent or codependent upon the experience of body-mind. They stay for a while, which is related to the energetic form. And then at the end of their period of time or their period of existence or manifestation, they fall. And one of the things that's talked about, and I talk about here as well, is by cultivating this habit, if you will, of non-attachment, of allowing, of letting go. There is a sense of dispassion which arises towards the objects which rise in waking, dreaming, and sleeping states. And then this characteristic, which the Buddha termed as a basic or essential characteristic or understanding about the nature of existence, can be seen very clearly. The reason that it's important for us to see this at some point is because it helps to break the attachment to ideas, to concepts, to experiences. When we realize impermanence, anicca, when we realize this as our direct perception, not just as a concept, but as a direct perception, we become much more able to just rest in awareness itself and allow the naturally arising codependent phenomenon of life to come and go in their own way. By doing this, we begin to break down our conditioning, the habit patterns of mind before we see the impermanent nature of objects or phenomenon, we have a tendency just to always be in the position where attention flows quite naturally and quite rapidly, just like this, to whatever object is strongest 
in the field of view, whether it's a sight, a sound, a taste, a touch, a smell, or a thought. Moves quite, attention moves quite rapidly from one object to another. It's not until we see the impermanent nature of these objects that we're actually able to stabilize in the witness position. Everyone doesn't always see necessarily the impermanent nature of things. There are personality types. And so different people experience this sense of letting go or non-attachment in different ways. Some directly see that all the phenomenon are empty. So this person may not relate very well to the experience of impermanence. May, their experience may be one of the recognition that all phenomenon are empty. Another person might also come to the recognition that they don't really understand what this concept of impermanence is or this concept of emptiness is, but they see that all phenomenon, all objects in body, mind and world, waking, dreaming and sleeping are in somehow in some way inherently unsatisfactory. In other words, they cannot lead to a permanent state of pleasure or they cannot lead because of their external quality. They cannot lead to awakening. So these are the three basic personality types that the Buddha described. The one who sees impermanence, the one who sees unsatisfactoriness and the one who sees emptiness. All three individually or collectively are the gateways to understanding oneself as awareness itself or as the light of consciousness. That which gives uh, light to the objects, if you will, that rise in body, mind and world in waking, dreaming and sleeping states. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That I just never had heard that word in Sanskrit before. So, uh -huh. <clears throat> um, yeah. So it's it just reinforces the fact that this third dimension is is just an illusion. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it very simple. Yes, especially this concept of impermanence, Anicca. Yes, because mm -hmm. this is. According to um, the teachings of Advaita, the teachings of the Buddha, uh, the teachings of Vedanta, that which is impermanent cannot be real. That which is real cannot be impermanent. So this points, as you said, toward the illusory nature of all phenomenon. Right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Mm. Yes, thank you. So remember that when we're talking about um, experience as illusory, we're not denying its existence and we're not mm, we're not saying it, it doesn't matter or we don't need to give attention to our bodies or we don't need to give attention to our lives. We don't need to give attention to whatever is here in awareness right now. It's not a denial. It's not a um, pushing away of life itself. It is simply to say that the, the nature of waking, dreaming, and sleeping is ephemeral. It's not permanent. It is coming and going at all times. That that is its nature. But our nature as being consciousness and bliss, that is what is real. That is what is permanent, eternal, unborn, undying. And you are that in your essential nature and the heart of being.
what this does is breaks down our attachment to anything which is impermanent. Makes it possible for us to allow what is to be here. And removes our fear that what is here, what is rising, what is coming, or what is gone has an it has a mm, a power or a capacity to limit us. What is coming is coming. What is going is going. That is their nature. <laughs> when we realize this, not as a concept, but as the truth of our own being, then what is there to fear? What is there to avoid? Nothing. All right. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Suganhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Vukamiva Vandhanam Richyor Mukshiya Mamritava Swaha Uva Bu Om Sat Jung Hang Om Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be well, be happy. I hope to see you all again soon. Only love. <laughs>